In our final video on the gene regulation uh, lecture, we're going to be looking at and entitling this final flowchart um, with the title Embryonic Development. Now this is a bit of a detour in what we've talked about, simply because what we've been talking about was really on a much more molecular genetic level. Now we're going to sort of ex expand our scope and sort of zoom out and look at development at the embryonic stages at the, let's say, before birth stages, at the stages within the womb that are going to cause very important overall consequences. We can start this conversation by looking at one of the most important characteristics of advanced organisms, which would be multicellularity. If you have a multicellular organism, you have a very, very interesting differentiation process that occurs in much of a stepwise pattern as I'm about to show you. So in order to have a multicellular organism, we have to initially have a fertilized egg. This is when sperm and egg meet, we have the fertilization event. This will eventually result in different cell types. Okay, Cells will be made through mitosis, then different types of those cells will be made through differentiation and specialization and morphogenesis that we've talked about. Once we've made different cell types, the next idea is to make different types of tissues because we have different cell types and tissues are made of cells. You probably already get where this flowchart is going now. Now we're going to have different organs because we have different tissues coalescing together. And because we have different organs, we have different systems. Okay, We have the immune system, the nervous system, the cardiovascular system, etc. All of these systems are different because we had differentiation. This is sort of an advanced sort of different look at to something you've seen many times over. You've seen that the cell is the basic unit of life and it turns into tissues and organs and systems, but you've never seen the fact that there's differences that cause these things to be individual. These differences are what make the individual. It makes the individual, meaning that it makes you and I, the fact that there are different systems, different organs, different tissues, different cell types, all after that fertilization event. And in order to have this to, in order this, for this to occur, you need three distinct processes to happen in a very regulated manner. That's why we're talking about gene regulation. That's why we're talking about embryonic development and that part of gene regulation. The three main processes that need to happen in order for this stepwise differentiation to occur is, you can say, increased complexity as well. So as we're doing this, we're actually um, increasing our complexity. So we're getting more and more complex, let's say. We can have uh, different sort of cell division that's going to govern what we've done here. Cell division, specifically mitosis, is going to be a big part of this. Another big part of this is going to be cell differentiation, something we've touched upon, uh, but we'll elaborate a little bit more in this video. Cell differentiation is specifically something when we have specialized structure and function. So it's all about specialization. Uh, you can even write structure plus function on the very bottom right here. I'll just squeeze that in. And then one last process that happens, so we have cell division, cell differentiation, and we also have something that I just mentioned uh, couple of seconds ago called morphogenesis. Morphogenesis, genesis means to be born or the birth of and uh, morpho means shape so this is all about obtaining a unique 3D structure which is what we see in advanced multicellular organisms. So how does this happen? Now of course this happens through gene regulation but there's also a bit of embryonic development that you need to understand. And this is going to be the rest of our flowchart, which will be entitled over here, different, because this is the key is difference right now, different sources of developmental information, let's say. Different sources of developmental information. And what we mean by information are things or rules or laws or blueprints that are going to govern development embryonic development specifically. More so, we're basically focusing on something called cytoplasmic determinants. Okay, And this is going to make sense because of the fertilized egg. The fertilized egg will have cytoplasmic determinants. So we'll call them D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-A-N-T-S. They're called cytoplasmic determinants that are very, very important and found in the egg originally. 
Now, look at this name. It's called the determinants, cytoplasmic determinants. They are going to determine things. This is a critical, critical part of fertilization and mitosis thereafter because what's going to happen is you're going to have um, certain maternal substances, let's say, in the egg. The, that's, what, that's what our determinants are. They're maternal substances, okay? These are maternal substances in the egg that the egg has. Remember, the egg is large and the sperm is small. The egg has all these nutrients and uh, sort of cytoplasmic determinants that we just talked about. These are going to be very important in influencing early development. So they have a direct influence on uh, development specifically. Influences early development and because it influences early development, you actually have an uneven distribution, not evenly distributed. And what we're saying is, I'll get to that in just a second, not evenly distributed in egg. Some sides of the egg have more determinants than others because it's just an unequal distribution. And because we have an unequal distribution of these maternal substances, these determinants, these maternal substances and determinants, think of them as um, proteins and uh, let's say maybe even some uh, mitochondrial DNA. So, so proteins and DNA are examples of the determinants. This is going to actually be very important and consequential to what happens in mitosis. Because mitosis, after fertilization, is actually going to divide this fertilized egg into two cells and then four and then eight and then 16. But once you have this mitosis after fertilization, you have a distribution, okay? The mitosis itself is what's going to distribute the determinants amongst the cells. Distributes determinants amongst, I'm getting a little sloppy here, amongst cells. So mitosis after fertilization, FERT, distributes determinants among cells. This means that, and here comes the differences, different cells with different amounts. So this is exactly what we just talked about. Different cell types, different tissues, different organs, different systems. Where does this difference uh, originate? It originates in this unequal, not even distribution of cytoplasmic determinants. Different cells will have different amounts of the determinants. And when you look at the determinants in combination with many other factors, the combo of these, let's say, CDs for cytoplasmic determinants actually directly influences, let's say, the fate of the cell. Influences the fate, in quotes, of cell. What that cell will eventually develop into post-embryonic stages. More specifically, we can state something like induction might occur. And induction is a direct example of influence of fate. The induction by nearby cells is a good example of the sources of developmental information. So induction by nearby cells. So this means that when you have a cellular, uh, let's say, environment, for this developing growing embryo, this cellular environment is going to influence very much so what's going to happen to the developing embryo in the sense that this cellular environment might cause something known as induction. And induction can be defined as signals, let's say, certain signals that directly cause so there's signals that cause, um, we'll say, cellular, squeeze that in there, changes. And these cellular changes are going to then eventually give us all of these different cell types and different tissues and different organs and different systems. This cellular environment is going to influence more so because sometimes we can have something even known as direct contact direct contact with maybe, let's say, neighbors, neighboring cells. Because you have to remember, this growing embryo has many cells all around it. What if you have one cell that has some determinants in it, and it's right next to another cell that doesn't have as many, and let's say it's releasing things like growth factors. Growth factors are an example of a cytoplasmic determinant. If it's releasing these growth factors, these growth factors, just because of the direct content, are technically going to be shared by those 
two very close cells. So what we can state is that this environmental influence, the where, where the cell is, can really, really influence the development. This is a source of developmental information, where the cell is in the embryonic environment based off of this determinant situation that we've established. We're going to finally close this lecture by looking at one last term called determination. It's a very, very important term. This is going to be the point at which the embryonic cell, the embryonic cell uh, is committed, let's say. It is committed in the sense that it is going to 100% turn into a heart cell. It has already committed to definitely turn into a nervous system cell. This, this commitment that happens um, is 100%, meaning that even if you move it, meaning that let's say you take this cell and move it away from the original cellular environment that it's in, if it's already been determined, if it's already reached the determination of its state, even if you move it away, it will still develop its normal fate. Still develop its normal fate. This is something that we're going to talk about more, especially in Bio 2, when we look at sexual reproduction and we look at those systems and the embryology behind this. But overall, this final flowchart, main idea behind here is to show you complexity through differences. How do these differences arise? These differences arise because cell division, cell differentiation, and morphogenesis are determined by the different sources of developmental information like cytoplasmic determinants, like induction, and also the idea of determination being the end-all be-all. This is what you're going to become because this is what you've been in influenced by through these statements that we've already made. So overall, we've completed gene regulation. Hopefully we have a much better appreciation for the topic. Very complex, very in-depth, requires a lot of prior knowledge on genetic, trend, genetic um, expression and also DNA. But overall, I really like this lecture because it's all-encompassing. It looks at the prokaryotic side, the eukaryotic side, and even ends on the embryonic side, which is a really sort of macro scale which really gives us a great appreciation for the gene regulation that we do see in us and in prokaryotes.